So what are some of the common questions you get asked by trainers who don't know a lot about coursing? I'd imagine it must be how do I know my dog can go up twice in a day and is that purely a matter of giving them that opportunity at a trial session like this? Yeah, I think um, most dogs will go up twice in a day um, and uh, the, the key is really going up three times in a day. Um, and just with a general level of fitness, you know, if the dog can't go up twice in a day, um, you've really got some, you know, it's not going to be a coursing dog. Um, once it's going up solidly twice, um, then, uh, you know, you're pretty safe to take it to a coursing meeting. If it gets through to a final, it's, it's going to test itself and then you'll find out just how strong it is third time. I think most dogs, um, you know, once they're fit, um, because the coursing starts in the morning and with our feeding regime, most people feed of a night time uh, or late afternoon, um, generally the first run in the morning won't be always the quickest and um, you know, a good coursing dog will come up a bit quicker second time. Uh, and then just how much of that form they're able to hold on to in a third run is a good indication of um, uh, you know, if they're going to really make it uh, and progress to some of the, the championships and some of our top events. The, probably the most uh, asked question from uh, trainers that are new to it is just what they do with their dog before, uh, between courses. And um, uh, it's, it's pretty much the same between each course. You know, the dogs get, uh, depending on uh, where they are in the program, but they probably get um, between an hour and three hours between the first two runs. And so that's plenty of time for a dog to recover. Uh, probably not quite as long as probably between one and two hours for the second, uh, between the second and third courses, uh, if they're successful through the day. Um, so it's important to, to make sure that the dog has a proper cool down period. Um, give them a drink. Uh, some people give them a bit of food. Um, uh, I like to give them electrolyte mix and um, something like sustagen. Um, uh, to drink. Um, other people might give them a bit of pasta and some chicken uh, with a drink uh, as well just to give them a bit of uh, protein, carbohydrates and uh, with the electrolytes. I, I restrict it to about a cup between each uh, event. Uh, after they finish for the day you know you can give them open slather but uh, it's important uh, just to restrict them to a cup and that, make, that way you're making sure they're getting all the, the electrolytes they need and, and the fluid back into their system but you're not going to overload their stomach for um, the rest of the day. So that's the way I do it but I think one of the most important things is to make sure they get rest so you know you want to put them in the trailer um, after they've cooled down. Uh, if it's a cold day like this make sure they're, they're rugged and so that they can rest. Uh, if it's a hot day uh, as we sometimes times get uh, throughout the season, the start or the end of the season. Um, it's important to make sure that they're nice and cool in the trailer, uh, make sure there's good ventilation uh, and then um, let them rest for an hour. You know, try not to go near the trailer and let them uh, uh, have, a, have a good break and, and then with plenty of time before their next event, you know, get them out, warm them up, um, give them, give them a, a rub down. You know, you see it uh, every time a footballer comes off the ground they're laying on the side of the ground and getting a rub down and making sure that you, you're getting as much of that um, uh, acid, lactic acid build up out of their muscles and uh, to get them warmed up for the next uh, round.